I'm Bradley Vincent, curator at Hodder Gallery on the Gold Coast. Hodder Gallery is thrilled to be supporting local artists to make new work. Next year, we'll be putting 20 local artists and artist collectives on display on the largest stage that's ever been available in the city. When we called for submissions, we asked for artists to submit a proposal of their choosing. What has emerged in the 20 selected artists is a real connection to place. There is, amongst them, a rich interest in nature and the environment. Also, a reflection on development and our human impact on the environment and what we extract from it. And, optimistically, a look at the individual in relation to nature and how we might find space for reflection in the world around us. In this podcast series, members of the Hodder Youth Advisory Group will sit down for a one-on-one with these artists to talk about their practice, their background and the work they're making for Hodder in 2021. So we're here today at TAFE Coomera with Natalie Pavosky and Nicola Moss, um, artists that I've had the pleasure of meeting recently, Nat through the Youth Advisory Group at Hodder Gallery and Nicola as she's going to be exhibiting with us in the new Hodder Gallery in 2021. So I thought I'd kick us off with a couple of questions and then we're going to just have a chat together and talk about... um, practice, art making, uh, living on the coast and place. So, um, Nicola, let's start with you. Can you tell us um, a bit about your journey to becoming an artist? Uh, Yes, it's been a a long journey. Um, I studied art at high school and uh, as soon as I got married, I had a studio space wherever we lived and Uh, It's grown from there, so quite a few years where I was working full-time and my art was something that I was able to do at night and on weekends. And then uh, some studies in my 30s, um, going back to do studies at that time, um, which was great, uh, learning a lot of different mediums and uh, meeting other creative people, so that was a really important time. And then I started my full-time practice in 2006, um, So that's in the studio I'm in now and, you know, I was exhibiting in galleries um, throughout Australia and I think um, that that, um, studio is on the North Gold Coast and it was really quite, um, I guess, pivotal in my practice uh, watching the change that occurred at that time and... Um, I think that's really shaped my practice going forward, my focus on ecology and nature, our relationship with environment. You mean the changes that you noticed as well living in that part of the coast and yes. um, your environment there? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's um, I'm in the hinterland, which uh, was old farmland area. And then after we'd been there about a year, um, it was that time when a thousand people a week were coming to Queensland oh. and all the houses were being built. And basically that's when Coomera and Upper and Coomera sort of really took off. And within a few years, there was just tens of thousands of new houses. So it was a huge change in the area, seeing um, bushland and farmland becoming medium and high density housing and suburbia. So it really got me thinking about the value of green space and environment um, how we find that balance between conservation and development. So that's where my work, it it really focused my work because it was happening within five kilometres of where I was living. I was seeing that change happening and, um, yeah, it really really set me off on that course of of thinking about how do we find that balance Um, because we all need places to live and we all need jobs and... I think we need green space as well. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. What about you, Nat? Has your um, approach to being an artist been a more recent one or do you have something you've always loved, like making and creating even as a child? Or Yeah, I was definitely always into art growing up. Like I always won the colouring in competition. (laughs) I was always the weird art girl at school. Um, But I graduated high school and I studied international relations And then I worked for the family business for a while and like was fully removed from art completely. And then when I was about 24, I just kept having panic attacks all the time and I couldn't understand why. So I don't know, I eventually just quit everything, went back to like just found some time to be myself for a while and started painting again. 
and then that's when it really kicked off. And then it was probably, what is it now? Maybe like two and a half, three years ago that I started taking it seriously. And then it's been the last two years that I've really started pursuing it completely. And now like I can say, I feel like I can say I'm an artist. Mm. So you've brought something along, Nicola. Do you want to yeah, so okay. share with um, So I was thinking... Uh, we spoke about maybe bringing an object or something to talk about and I realised that I don't work so much with objects in my practice but um, I work with experiences and conversations that I have with people and um, yeah, I find it really inspiring. They're, or they're often informal conversations, um, not sort of sit down or or anything like that. But anyway, um, I have this little questionnaire or questions I ask people um, about green space and gardens and I asked my niece Abby who's eight um, to do it and she was really happy too so the questions I asked her was please describe your garden and the other question was uh, what value uh, do you think having plants and trees around you has in your everyday life and she asked me if she could draw draw her answer so uh, she did she she drew the garden which has got the house and the deck and the the dog and some flowers and so on and she didn't really understand the second question so much so I reworded it for her I asked her if there were no flowers and no plants and no trees around you how would you feel um, so she drew me a second picture which looks quite sad and she wrote one word beside it lonely and that that just said so much to me. Um, Abby was eight years old when she answered these questions. Um, so I find these conversations is a way to hear a lot of different viewpoints from people about what they um, feel about having plants around them or what green space means to them in their everyday lives. And it gives me quite a lot of inspiration for making work and... Um, I guess those conversations just sort of bubble around in the back of my head and I make connections and uh, that, that comes out in the work. What I really like about what you said, Nicola, is that like uh, the best thing about art is that it feeds into everything. So like every conversation you have, like you never stop, which I don't know, might be not great at times, but I think that's the best part. <laughs> everything is art. Um, well, my work, um, I really find the mundane is sacred. Um, and I like exploring domestic environments. So like I've always been very nosy. I've always like going into people's houses, opening their cupboards, just any chance I can, I'll, I'll get into someone's house and do that. Um, so a lot of my work explores um, like the home environment and those mundane corners that seem quite insignificant, but actually say quite a bit about someone. So whether it's like the kitchen bench top or the bathroom cabinet or your bedside table, the brands you buy and the ornaments that you collect and that you place close to you, they actually say quite a bit about your nature, your rituals, what you believe, what you prioritise. Um, and I just really like using that as a way to understand people and try and understand what drives them. So I'll select someone. Like I usually kind of just going about life. Will, someone will come into my life that I find is doing something interesting or they're just like really trying to express who they are genuinely and I'll, I'll ask to have ask to be invited into their home and I'll spend some time in their home, have a conversation with them, take some photos. Often they'll like show me around their home and be like, oh, look at this area and I think this would look really nice. And like I just go along with it for a while and then when they're not looking, I'll like take a photo of something that actually says about them. So it's like a messy bench top or it's like, yeah, inside your bathroom cabinet or it's the top of a chest of drawers or something like that um yeah and then I'll do like a kind of abstracted painting of that wow and it's really interesting that like the items we keep and the objects we hold dear to us or even the little um still lifes that you can find in people's homes whether they, they seem to be curated or not and like the things the items you collect people aren't always conscious of it but when you start to like really look at it and you and when you do look at the art they collect yeah it says so much about them and usually they have no idea like they don't know why they've purchased it like some people are very intentional about it but a lot of people don't necessarily understand why and it's amazing the insights you can 
gain from someone just based off that. Mm. And these um, these insights or, or looking at what people, is there something for you in that? Like what, um, is that something you think could lead to future, like de keep developing new work or? Um, I think like what, I'm just trying to understand myself. Like okay. this whole thing is just me trying to understand myself and understand the world that we live in because I feel like a lot of things don't make sense to me or didn't make sense to me growing up and I'm just trying to understand people so I can understand my place. It's almost like it almost like helps me feel safe and secure. There's like a need to understand things so I can yeah, it helps me feel safe. Both of the subject matters or approaches in your work have this kind of cathartic like healing kind of approach like people will often talk about nature as being um, a balm for the soul or healing and and similarly like your home is your sanctuary you know so mm -hmm. I feel like it's in, interesting how you both approach that in very different ways with very different um, subject matter but I don't know Nicola like do, is your work healing for you like is there, mu is there much I know Nat you spoke about like how it's about a way for you to find yourself but what about for you Nicola? Yeah, so there was a, a change in my work around um, 2005. I'd, I'd been making work for quite a few years that I guess looked at that um, impact between conservation and development. I'd been on a few residencies looking at where open co coal mines sit right next to World Heritage Area in the Blue Mountains. And um, I just, I realised that we already, everyone's already bombarded with all the problems. We, we already know the problems. And I, I just, I realised that I needed to think about what was possible rather than focus on that. Um, so I, I had this experience, um, I was lying on a beach at Kuchimadla Island. I, I was working and I closed my eyes and I was just feeling that place and listening to the tide and I could feel the breeze on my face and the bird calls and I just, I had this moment where all of my senses were engaged and I felt so present in that place and so much energy. And I realised um, there was a real exchange of energy with all the life around me. And I started making work about that. And it was a real change point because the work was thinking about the positive aspects of spending time in nature and the sense of well-being that I feel. And I think it's something people probably experience when they're on holidays, you know, when we're away from our computers and work and maybe the phone's not blinging quite so much, um, that we have our senses engaged and we feel we feel some connection with the environment around us. And I, I think I've, I feel alive on those days. You know, I, I think it's um, it's really good for my well-being and, and for other people's. So I started uh, focusing work on that and at, that continues, I think, um, nature for me is a real sanctuary uh, but I think even if you're just having lunch under a tree or you know you have a weekend um, outdoors it's it's really good for us not just physically but mentally as mm. well you know it has I think we're intrinsically connected to all of the life around us and it's it's perhaps something we're not always conscious of but I think it's important yeah. Mm. It's such a nice, gentle reminder for people. <laughs> <laughs>